Every day when you log into ChumbaCasino.com, the ultimate online social casino, you get a free daily bonus. Imagine if you got daily bonuses in other parts of your life. I chose French fries over loaded French fries. I asked Stuart from accounting about his weekend, even though I don't care. I updated my operating system without having to call tech support. Collect your free daily bonus at ChumbaCasino.com now. And live the Chumba life. BDW Group. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. This is a special report. Breaking news here on what should have been a sleepy Thursday afternoon. The Philadelphia Eagles have acquired their wide receiver three. Johnny and I have spent a lot of time talking over the last couple weeks about wide receiver three. Were they on the roster? If so, who was it? Now we know the answers to those questions. The Eagles do an interdivisional trade with the Washington Commanders. Uh, They acquire wide receiver Jahan Dotson. He was a first-round pick, 16th overall in the 2022 NFL Draft. Uh, I've got the official terms of the trade. We're going to talk through our initial thoughts to it. But uh, before we get too far into this, Johnny, how are you doing? What are your initial thoughts? I don't even know where to start. We've never done a breaking news pod before. Yeah, I have never in my life done a breaking news podcast. So uh, hopefully the first of many, um, if the time falls correct. Uh, My gut instinct is, first of all, we'll we'll get more into the player, but gut instincts about the position is the Eagles needed a wide receiver free. Like, I am fully on board with the Eagles being contenders this year. I think when you've got players like Lane Johnson who are aging and I think the way Jalen Hurts is looking in camp and you never know, you might lose coordinators in the future as well, especially Kellen Moore. I think they are in win-now mode. And quite simply, we said it before and time and time again, I'm fed up of the Eagles not having a third wide receiver. And in particular, the Eagles don't have a second tight end really either. So even if they play a lot of 12 personnel, like they're not going to live in 12 personnel as an offense. So they needed someone else. Johnny Wilson's not ready for a starting wide receiver free route. John Ross definitely isn't. I'm a huge Paris Campbell guy, but unfortunately he got hurt at the wrong time. So my initial instinct, like gut feeling before I look at the terms and the cap and everything, my, my pure gut feeling is they needed a wide receiver free and they got someone who is absolutely capable of being a wide receiver free. And I think if things go well, he's better than your standard wide receiver free. So I think uh, Dane Brugel, I said it, that the Eagles arguably have the best trio in the league. Um, I'd have to look at every single receiving group before I said that, but it undoubtedly makes the Eagles better. And we will get into the specifics now. But essentially, this move makes the Eagles better and it gives them a better chance of winning this year, which is basically what we want. Um, so yeah, do you want to get into the specifics of the trade, Shane? I'm sure most people are aware, um, but we'll go for exactly what the Eagles gave up, etc. Yeah, so the Eagles traded away um, a third round pick And they have two third-round picks. So it is whichever third-round pick is later, they have theirs and the Dolphins. Uh, They traded a pair of seventh-round picks, of which I believe they have four. And so it's the two latest seventh-round picks. So the earliest third, the two latest sevenths, and they got Jahan Dotson and a fifth-round pick. And so depending on how you want to look at that, uh, per the trade value chart, the draft compensation surrendered is equivalent basically to a compensatory third-round pick. Um, Another way of looking at it, and I put this out on Twitter, is that the Eagles had that extra third rounder from the Dolphins. And if you're like, I don't remember the Eagles trading anyone to the Dolphins, it's because they didn't. Uh, During the draft, they traded a fourth round pick for a third round pick in the next season, which is one of the reasons it's so good to have a GM with job security and stability because as a whole, the league devalues future picks and they simply shouldn't. Um, but they do and how he does not and he's always willing to move back a year and up around so if you really think about it the Eagles essentially drafted Jahan Dotson with a fourth round pick this year and traded a pair of sevenths for a fifth rounder and I, I think that's just fantastic value by the Eagles if you want to look at it that way the Eagles will hold his rights for three years if they do pick up that fifth year option down the road which I'm sure they wouldn't um, but you look at the Eagles offensive core now and you have Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Jahan Dotson and Dallas Goddard and that entire core is locked up for two seasons and then Goddard's deal expires but then everybody else is locked up for at least three seasons with Hurts, Brown and Smith being locked up till 2028 or 2029 and so 
Uh, I think it's a it's an excellent move raising the floor of that wide receiver three position. I don't think you know he has wide receiver one upside. I think he's a solid wide receiver two. I think he's great for what the Eagles need as a wide receiver three. Yeah, you didn't mention there, Shane, the contracts as well, but I would assume that Landon Dickerson, Lane Johnson, Jordan Mailata, and Cam Jurgens are probably under pretty decent um, cap lengths as well. I haven't looked up, but you could argue that like nine or ten starters for the Eagles offense is like locked in for a couple of years. And I think if you look around the league at some of the best offenses year in, year out, they often have a lot of security and they often play together every year. Um, so that is massive. Like You feel like the Eagles have no excuses really to be a very good offense for the um for the next three or four years really which is pretty mental because that side is now locked up and Dotson's money as well for um I don't think you mentioned the actual salary I think he's on like a million and a half this year and then just under three million next year before the fifth year option even kicks in which is very very reasonable money for any uh, wide receiver free um so there you go right Shane we've got a couple of questions coming in as well is there anything you wanted to add and we will get into Dotson as a player uh, shortly we'll do stats then film i've got some film notes and you've got a bunch of numbers um the number one comment seems to be stuff about like uh there's one coming in from trey about what washington would take like why they do this and i think it's sort of I, I think you could call it a win now for both teams i think sometimes teams just don't fit what a staff are trying to do terry mclaurin's their number one there they seem to really like some of the younger guys they've got like the army brown and although we're talking about it as giving up a four because of what we did last year, but it doesn't apply to Washington. At the end of the day, Washington get a third. So although we're rationalizing it as saying, well, it's actually a fourth, um, that doesn't apply to Washington because they had nothing to do with the trade last year. So they are basically getting a third. And, you know, third round picks are valuable. Um, I, If I was Washington, probably wouldn't have done this because I like Dotson, but I can understand why if he was falling down uh, the pecking order and wasn't a guaranteed starter to get a third round pick for your wide receiver three or wide receiver four, I think is a is pretty decent from their point of view. I, I disagree with their point of view, by the way, as we'll get into, but I can sort of understand it sort of from their angle as well. Is that fair, Shane? Yeah, I think so. Um, report, I mean, he had a down year last year. And so, you know, in 2023, he was 94th out of 102 receivers in yards per route run per pro football focus. That was down from 53rd the year before. So he had a drop off last season. Uh, reports were that he was struggling in training camp. He was being outplayed by Deami Brown. Uh, they obviously drafted Luke McCaffrey, and maybe they were just ready to move on. And you do have to have a bit of pause whenever a team trades away a young wide receiver when you just drafted a quarterback and they're doing it in division. You, you generally assume that the team that's trading away someone knows more about them than the team that's acquiring them. And... Through his first two years, he hasn't really shown the level of production that lines up with where he was drafted, which was 16th overall in, in the first round. He has uh, a 523-yard, seven-touchdown season as a rookie. He had 518 yards and four touchdowns last season. Now, it is worth noting that his quarterback play has been abysmal during that time. He's had to play with uh, Jacoby Brissett, Carson Wentz, Sam Howell. Like It has not been good quarterback play. Uh, but new regime comes in. You're not necessarily tied to old players. And I, for whatever reason, he fell out of favor in Washington. So I would have, I'm with you. I would have kept him if I'm Washington, but if he's going to be your wide receiver for, uh, maybe you just take those, those uh, picks for him. Yep. I agree. Um, before we get into um, any other films, we go through some of the basic uh, numbers as well. And they did a little bit there, but I think you had some good stuff from Matt Harmon as well on reception perception um yes we can tell breaking news i'm just like throwing it to shane like give me the stats i haven't gone in depth in the stats i've just got film notes um so before i get into sort of what i've seen do you want to talk the listener through uh what his numbers show and just to have interest quick um thing shane because you've looked at this beforehand do his numbers show that he played worse as well last year it wasn't just a basic statistical downfall as far as i'm aware it was like advanced stats also proved that he was just simply not as good last year am i right Yes, yeah, his yards per route run were down significantly last year. Um, I be I didn't write this down. I'm pretty sure his separation numbers were also down. His success rate was down. So overall, it was a down year, and the Eagles are trying to buy the dip a little bit there. Um, I put this out on Twitter. If you're listening on an audio platform, you can go look that up. If you're watching live now, it's up on the screen. But 
Uh, reception, Sorry, Shane, perception. Just really quickly, before you get into reception, perception, just a quick note on numbers going down as well. Like, I always think that's good for a buying team because players don't like dramatically change. Like, he didn't just dramatically get worse. So there's a couple of things that could have happened. Sometimes it's character. Maybe a guy thinks he's made it after a good rookie year and doesn't work as hard. And you never know. I'm not saying anything about Dotson's work ethic here, but sometimes that can happen. Second thing is a scheme change or a QB change. And we know that Washington has gone through a lot of QB changes as well. And the final thing that can happen is cornerbacks can figure you out. So it could be that he started really strongly, cornerbacks have got tape on him, and now he needs to adjust. But I always think um, it's sort of good that he's had one good year. I think he's proven he can play in the league, um, which for me matters a lot. Because I'm going to talk about what I saw from him pre-draft in a bit. But the fact that he has proven to play in the league. Yes, he had a second uh, sort of year that wasn't as good. And the other thing in the room, Shane, that no one ever talks about when it comes to players because we don't make excuses, but players are injured all the time and players are not on injury reports all the time. And they go through things that we don't know about personally, uh, medically. And it could be that his second year has reasons why it was a sort of decline that we just don't see. But at the end of the day, as the numbers you're about to talk through here on the board, his rookie year was really, really good. Um, and that proves to me that he can play in the league. If you compare him to someone like Traylon Burks in that draft class, who has simply never proven he can play in the league. If you draft for someone like him, you're taking a pure shot on talent, not based on anything he's done in the league. Dotson is not that. Although he didn't play well last year, um, he has proven that he can play well. So I think that's a really big um, point to note. Um, sorry for cutting you off there, because I know the 2022 numbers are good. So take it away. Yeah, so it's the from Reception Perception, which is a great follow on Twitter. They do a lot of great work with receiver charting and they charted out success rate by route run in 2022 and 2023. And I mean, you look at it and the graphic is a lot of green arrows, uh, except for flat routes, which apparently only had a 33% success rate. But um, I posted this out on Twitter. And the first thing people mentioned was that in both 2022 and 2023, he has a 100% success rate on screen passes. Um, so Maybe the Eagles are going to throw a lot of screens to Jahan Dotson. You don't know. But what stands out to me looking at the route is he's good over the middle of the field, particularly that dig route in both 23 and 22. He was at an 82% success rate running or on, when targeted on dig routes. Good on post routes, good on slant routes. He's not as good breaking to the outside. And again, that's all from that's all from charting advanced stats that's not from going back and watching film obviously haven't had time to do that on a breaking news podcast but uh the success rate dropped off last year you know the quarterback play dropped off last year he had some injury issues last year as well i think uh, eagles eric is chiming in i couldn't remember what the injury was but uh hamstring issues is what he said and that sounds right so he was dealing with some injuries last year i think you take that into account as well um, I had there's a couple comments that we saw here that uh, we'll address, and you guys keep dropping these comments. But somebody asked if he'll be a slot receiver. Uh, James on Facebook, uh, Nathan on YouTube asked how often he'll be on the field. Um, I don't think he can play the slot well, and doubt the Eagles want Smith to be taking those kind of receptions often. Uh, his rookie season, which was obviously the better year, he lined up on 26 percent of his snaps in the slot. Last year, that was up to 42%. So he did play the slot a lot more last year. That's the role Washington tried to settle him into. And I think, you know, the Eagles will use all of their guys in the slot. Last year, Devontae Smith was in the slot on 30% of his snaps. A.J. Brown was in there on 24% of his snaps. And so they will they will move guys in and out of the slot. I think that they want guys to be able to play in multiple roles. So I'm not necessarily concerned about that this isn't a guy that was brought in that can only play the slot um you know he's been moved around the most troubling thing to me with him is his drop rate uh, he has a 7.7 percent career drop rate uh, i think i think it was like top five among wide receivers last year was his drop rate so there's some issues with his hands um that you know will certainly bear a monitoring but overall like i said i'm really excited that the eagles made this move yeah, worth throwing out there as well. The drop rate sometimes linked to quarterback as well. Not always, but same as yards after the catch. 
Um, certain quarterbacks historically always seem to have receivers with higher drop rates um, than others. Um, right, Shane, anything else you wanted to add before? I'm going to go a little bit deep because I've got a lot of notes on Dotson. I'm, I'm sort of keeping myself calm here, Shane. I'm being very rational, but I really, really like Dotson pre-draft. So people are going to find out just how much I did of um if anyone remembers from that draft, uh, of course, listen to everything I said because I had Traylon Burks as like my wide receiver one or two or something as well. So I obviously wait, wait, nailed wait. that draft. Traylon last. Burks was your wide receiver one? Yeah. Uh, remember, he, was remember my, how we've... he was my oh, wide yeah. receiver one too. Uh, can you remember how we did the pre-draft podcast, Shane? And I said that I'm trying not to get sucked in by big, tall, fast guys. And Traylon Burks is part of the reason why uh-huh. um, I'm trying not to get ruined by those guys anymore. Um, anything else you wanted to add? And then I've got a bunch of film notes um, that I can get into. Um, any other sort of like general takeaways or pictures on the stats? That I know you've been running through some of the numbers. Anything else you wanted to throw out there? No, you try to be rational and talk through your notes, and I'm going to put up a highlight reel I made while you talk. So Yeah, this is going to be amazing. So if anyone's uh, watching and not just listening, you can get to hear me talk while Shane posts a number of reels that, number one, maybe just like go against everything I'm going to say. Uh, which is also great. And secondly, I've got to somehow try and read through my notes and ignore everything that's going on the screen. So this is a challenge for me. Um, first thing I would say is I watch Dotson a lot because obviously I watch every Eagles game uh, multiple times. So I've watched the Eagles play Washington uh, numerous times. And I also keep an eye on, in, on the NFC East. And I thought the rookie year was exactly what I expected from Dotson. I actually was going back through my old tweets, um, searching through Dotson's name. And I commented about October or November, his rookie year. Like this is exactly why I really, really liked him. So I'll give you a few things I liked. Um, This was my pre-draft scouting report, but I will be honest, when I go back and watch him, I doubt anything has radically changed. I don't think players radically change that much. I think just environments change and sometimes players progress slightly. Um, So the reason why I like Dotson so much, I'll go through maybe like strengths first, was I think he's a really, really good route runner. Uh, He understands how to get open and defeat man coverage. So I said he understands the nuance as well. I think compared to someone like Traylon Burks, who is just big and fast, Dotson isn't blessed with that. He's only 5'11". I think he came out about 180 or 178. Um, so he needs to sort of understand how to get open. So things like head fakes, shoulder leans, you'll see he's got really good footwork. He basically to defeat man coverage. I said he's sort of multiple. He's not a down-the-field explosive type, I'm saying, as I watch him catch a down-the-field touchdown. Um, but he is good enough to get down the field. So I said he can basically win in every single way. And I think this is the most interesting thing for me. Um, ah, brilliant. As Dotson wins underneath and gets yards after the catch. Because my next point is uh, he can get yards after the catch in the short game. He's very good in the intermediate and the middle of the field. And he's pretty fearless catching the ball over the middle and has some explosiveness in the vertical game. And I think Kellen Moore wants receivers that do everything. I think you've mentioned this already. I think a lot of comments asking about, is he going to play in the slot? I really don't care about that right now, personally. I think AJ Brown's going to play in the slot. I think Devontae Smith's going to play in the slot. And I think Jahan Dotson's going to play in the slot. I think all three of them are going to move around a lot. I don't think Kellen Moore believes in sort of keeping receivers at one side. He is not explosive like a uh, down-the-field type that the Eagles have tried to have as their wide receiver free in recent years. If you think Quez Watkins, um, he is much more of a well-rounded receiver who can sort of do everything well. Into sort of... Oh, I, one other comment I mentioned, by the way. I mentioned actually his blocking is pretty good. I said for a, for a smaller guy, he's very, very physical and does show up blocking. And I think that's also worth noting because we know how much the Eagles will ask their receivers to block because they're going to run the ball up. Um, in terms of things that I had problems with him and maybe where Washington have struggled a little bit, uh, I said that he obviously does not have the biggest frame. He will struggle against press coverage. He's much more a Z or a slot than would ever be an X. I said he'll never be a true wide receiver one because he's extremely limited and he could certainly improve his play strength. Essentially, when I came to like my transition, I basically said uh, that his upside is probably limited to a very good wide receiver two due to his lack of size. But I think he'll be a very successful pro at the next level. Despite not consistently being able to be pressed, he does have enough examples of him being able to, to survive on the outside with his route running and quick feet. And this may surprise people listening because he obviously went in the first round. But if you cast your mind back to 2022, I do not believe he was expected to go that high. But when talking specifically, when I do my scouting reports, I write them for the purpose of the Eagles. So I said, I do not believe he is a consensus first rounder. So this may surprise quite a few of you. But I do think he would be a worthy pick for the Eagles in the first round. I did say I wouldn't mind the trade back. I think the Eagles were picking around 16, 20 that draft. Um, off the top of my head, I said he is not the physical outside presence that I believe the Eagles will go after, and they did indeed go after a physical outside presence. Well, that wasn't Traylon Burks, it was 
uh, AJ Brown, of course. And I said, but I think he's extremely solid prospect. And I think he would complement Devontae Smith very, very well. Um, he has a chance to play with Devontae Smith now. Um, but as well as uh, he will not be the wide receiver two for the Eagles, he will be the wide receiver three. And I think he clearly will be the wide receiver three. Like, I think he's significantly better than their current options. If I'm a fantasy guy, I'm not like jumping for joy about this. I don't think his numbers are going to be brilliant, but I think we look at through the lens of numbers all the time now, all analysts do, because it's such a big fantasy world out there. And he may not get a huge amount of targets every um, week, but I think he will have an impact. And I expect him to play, once he gets up to speed, a significant amount of snaps. Um, we spoke about Kellen Moore's offense a lot. The use of motion, the use of jet sweeps, uh, the use of a lot of like underneath route concepts and not just going down the field, the use of hot routes against the blitz, quick slants, that kind of thing. I think he fits the offense really well. Um, I think the one interesting thing, if I had to put out there, the thing that I'm excited to see is he run a lot, or sorry, he ran a lot of sort of crossing routes. Um, I think he excelled in the middle of the field. That's where he sort of made his money in college. And we know that historically, this Eagles offense has not targeted those sort of crossing routes that Kellen Moore loves to use. And I think the benefit of having multiple receivers to do it is it's just harder for the defense to predict it. I've seen a lot of um, fantasy analysts talk about how Devontae Smith's going to absolutely eat on these crossing routes in the middle of the field. And whilst that's true, if you just use the same receiver doing it every time, it becomes a little bit predictable. So I think the Eagles offense is now just a lot, lot um, better balance. And I think he is good enough to be a wide receiver too, in my own opinion. So the fact that he's going to be on the wide receiver free and not command a lot of targets, fantasy wise, he may not go off. But I think he makes the offense significantly better. Um, yeah, that's my sort of pre-draft film notes that I had on Dotson. Yeah, I unfortunately, I don't have my written scouting report from that year uh, because that was on a website that doesn't exist anymore. And I stupidly did not get them all before it went down. Uh, I did. I discovered while searching through my tweets while you were talking for his name that I do have a video scouting report on Twitter, but I have not rewatched it. So I retweeted it. You can go watch it um, and see what I thought about him back then. But I had him as wide receiver seven in that draft, uh, number 30 overall on my big board. I do have my big board. Um, I also have on that big board just some notes. Uh, Mel Kuyper had him at 22 overall. Uh, the Draft Network had him at 24 overall. He was 46 on PFF's big board and 34th on the Ringers' big board. And so um, I thought he was overdrafted when the Commanders drafted him, but I, ha you know, I had him near the end of the first round or into the early second round. Um, I will say there's been a comment that uh, a certain GM in the league has made a few times this year, uh, Mr. Jerry Jones, about how the Cowboys are all in. Uh, somebody needs to, how he needs to call him and let him know that this is what all in looks like. Like you're, you're making moves. You're trying to better your team, not just trying to run it back. Um, but let's go to a few more comments here. Um, we've got John said that he wanted John Mechie, but Dotson has nice upside. Um, William says that his catch ratio is good. Uh, we've got Steven on Facebook, isn't a fan, says that now we've moved a third round pick for a backup quarterback and a number three wide receiver that the commanders wouldn't keep. What's Howie doing? Um, I think it's worth noting they didn't really trade a third round pick for Kenny Pickett. They traded a third round pick for Kenny Pickett and a fourth round pick, if I recall correctly. And if I actually, if I recall correctly, I could be wrong. That fourth round pick is the one they then traded to the Dolphins for the third round pick that they just traded for Jahan Dotson. So in essence, they got Kenny Pickett and Jahan Dotson and a fifth round pick for a third and two sevenths. If I did that right in my head, connecting the dots. So um, Star Wars on YouTube says this was a dumb trade by the commanders. Uh, James says that I believe teams won't focus on him with the talent of the Eagles. He's going to get a lot of single coverage. And that's very true. Like, I mean, he is going to be the fifth person in terms of priority that defenders have their eyes on so big chance for him to prove what he can do he asked what kind of speed he has he ran a 4-4-3-40 uh, at the combine so he's got good speed he's not a burner like johnny said but he's got got good speed he's um i'd say short rather than he's like far i always use this in scouting terms but he's quick rather than fast and that sounds so stupid as a comment but like he's better in short areas like short area quickness he excels at he's not like the kind of guy that i I'd expect to see like, but just literally like the Sean Jackson, line him up outside, set him on a go route and just let him burn through. He's not really that kind of player. He's much quicker on like underneath roots and stuff. Do and it, this Johnny. is a lovely comment. 
This do is a lovely it. comment. Make the comment. Make the say the phrase nah. quicker than fast. Yeah, quick. Yeah, I've done this too many times. I'll compare it to someone else. Um, great comment here coming in from how you interesting YouTube name. RV WYD. Anyway, he's a Commanders fan. We'll take him at face value. Could not be. Uh, but he said, um, Jahan is great. We'll miss him a lot. You got a good one. Don't bash the kid. He has amazing talent. Uh, we've got a few more coming in. Uh, Ryan mentioned how good his hands were at Penn State. Um, Eagles Eric said, How is his blocking? Presumably terrible. Yeah, I'll be honest, Eric. I watched none of his blocking as in, as a pro, but I did specifically mention on his scouting report um, that actually he's a lot more physical as a blocker than you'd think. Now, I'm going back two years, and if you're asking me to remember Jahan Dotson's blocking at Penn State, like, it's not happening. But I did make a specific note on my comments. And to be honest, I don't talk much about blocking on my wide receiver notes. And I did. It's right here in front of me. I said, um, despite his size, he's a pretty physical player and shows up blocking every game I watched. So the fact I mentioned that suggests that maybe, and I might watch the film in two hours and go, oh, no, I was completely wrong. He cannot block at all at the next level but i think he's willing at least he's obviously not going to be great because he's not the biggest and um, but i think he is willing um right for we've got a ton of comments coming in yeah it's for what it's worth his run block grades from pff are truly terrible 36 there we go as a rookie 41.8 last year for yeah, for what so that's, that's worth said. yeah and also players sometimes at college can do things differently in the pros when you're going up against six foot one cornerbacks um especially that are physically stronger at NFL level. Sometimes they won't show up. I didn't really call him a great blocker. I just said he is a willing blocker. And I think sometimes you sort of take what you can get. Um, I think the big thing I wanted to mention that someone did comment this earlier on, and now I cannot see it. Actually, I think you've already may have posted it if you didn't, James Dowling's earlier on, that talking about like how it's not all about fantasy, I think teams will now just have to be a little, little bit more wary like about just simply bracketing Devontae Smith and AJ Brown and simply sort of like thinking, right, they've got nothing else. Because let's be honest, at the moment, the Eagles really did not have a lot else at wide receiver three. Even whether you want to believe in like first round hype or name value, Dotson has name value. Like defensive call that is going to be a little bit more concerned when they're planning um, for Dotson. It's just early draft picks always last longer. Um, essentially, it does just give them a little bit more pop for that wide receiver three. And it might change a few defensive game plans. They maybe don't want to leave Johan Dotson on an island against a weaker slot corner, for example, every week. And I think the big thing is, just quickly, he can play outside. Whereas I, from what I've seen, and this is very, very minor, but I'm not sure yet Johnny Wilson can. Um, and I'm really not sure Paris Campbell can. But again, I haven't seen a huge amount of them, but I think they're mainly um, except in the slot. Whereas I think although Dotson's smaller, he can survive outside. And all he needs to do is be able to survive because it means you can move AJ Brown and Devontae Smith around. Uh, Devontae Smith? Devontae Smith. <laughs> I think, yeah, I don't know who the hell that is. It just gives you a lot more versatility, basically. It just gives you a lot, lot um, more versatility as an offense. Um, right, that's pretty much all I have, Shane. Uh, we'll try and keep these relatively short. Is there anything you wanted to throw to a few final comments? Um, yeah, let, I want to go to this last comment here because it's a question yeah, I wanted it. to ask you. Well, yeah. Big picture wide receiver room now. Uh, and I'll answer first because I've been thinking about it while you were talking about it. How many wide receivers are the Eagles going to keep and who do you think it'll be? And so... I mean, obviously, you've got your top three and A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, Jahan Dotson now. Uh, to me, Britton Covey is a lock as your return man. I think Johnny Wilson is for sure there because they drafted him and they like what he brings as a blocker for you know, what we've deemed 11 and a half personnel. Um, I think that might be the five. I, I think this probably costs John Ross slash Paris Campbell their shot at, at making the 53-man roster because of how loaded the defensive backfield is and i mean i don't think anaya smith was ever going to make it so i would say they keep five uh, and i would say the two that they keep besides the three starters are Britton covey as wide receiver five slash your return guy and johnny wilson yeah it's weird though isn't it because anaya smith was actually drafted before that long ago but i guess they might think they can stash him on the practice squad um john ross i think is now done i would imagine um, I think they may try and keep Paris Campbell, but that's probably just my pre-draft bias coming in again because he's just been hurt and hasn't really had a great chance. Um, so I think there is an outside chance, but yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain Johnny Wilson will make it based on what we've read um, as well. Uh, should, should we finish, Shane, with like the old school? Like, I mean, we're podcast hosts now, apparently. So should we do like the old grade? Isn't that what people love? Don't you have to give everything a grade now? 
Uh, they do, and really I bad. wasn't going to ask you that because I know how much you hate that. But Oh, I hate them. But you I brought like it up, so give me spot. a grade, Johnny. How would you grade this trade? I could just refuse now and say no. Um, I guess I would <laughs> That would give be a true a, power move. Should I be really, really proper NFL and just say, you know what, I'll give it a B. Because it's basically like the safe grade where if it goes wrong, you know, I didn't give it an A. And if it goes really well, yeah, I still gave it a B. But I would, uh, when I first read it, my gut was like a third round pick is a little rich, if I'm fully honest. Then when smart people like yourself explain to me that it's not really, I mean, it is a third, but it's also sort of a fourth because they managed to turn a fourth into a third last year. All of a sudden, it becomes a little bit more reasonable. So as a player for a wide receiver free, unless they were going to get like a veteran like an Adam Thielen who maybe gives you like six months of great play, I think he's like as good as you can get. I know like John Metchie was thrown out there. There were some younger receivers, but he's like a legitimately talented. Like he could be a wide receiver too and has been a very good wide receiver too. I remember going back to his rookie year, there were a lot of fans out there saying Terry McLaurin um, is no longer the wide receiver one in Washington. And I'm pretty sure as a dynasty player, Dotson was going high. Like I, he was definitely getting drafted over Terry in certain um, fantasy drafts as well. So I would give it like a B towards a B plus um, personally, because I really, really like the player. And as I said at the start, essentially it makes the Eagles a lot better. And at this stage, we're in late August, the Eagles have a huge need at wide receiver free. And I'm not sure everyone had fully caught on to how big of a need it was. Uh, what it also gives you is if one of AJ Brown or Devontae Smith go down for a little bit, Dotson can step in as a number two. And I don't think they have any receiver currently who can play as a wide receiver two and play a lot of the snaps if one of them was to get injured for a short amount of time. Yeah, I, I would give it like an a, a. I mean, I would give it an A. And it's not because I think Jahan Dotson is an A player necessarily. Um, but I think it was a good value, especially when you trace out what that third round pick really represents. So uh, I think it's a tremendous move to raise the floor of the offense. And we've talked about, you know, what happens if AJ or Devante misses four games? Well, what happens now is Jahan Dotson becomes a wide receiver too, which is probably where he should be in the league. And then you put somebody in there at wide receiver three and yeah, there's a drop off, but it's not like all of a sudden, oh my gosh, we have to play with Devontae Smith and John Ross and Johnny Wilson and try to figure out how to make this work. So I think it raises the floor a lot. I think there's some good potential. One of the biggest issues was the drops, and Ryan commented in our chat here earlier about how his hands were phenomenal at Penn State. He only had uh, two drops on 137 targets his senior season at Penn State. So I don't know why that's been an issue in Washington. Hopefully that comes back. But even if it doesn't, even if he stays in that 7% drop rate, I think it's a really good move. Um, I like that he's here for more than one year. Uh, I'm excited by what the Eagles did here. So I am I wish it had happened earlier in camp. So he had more time with the team in the playbook, that sort of thing. But he's a pro. They'll figure it out. I will finish by just saying that whatever happens, whether it works out or not, I'm still very very happy to have a general manager who takes swings because if you want to get better and you want to win you got to take swings they're not all going to pay off some of these trades have not gone well for the eagles especially the in-season ones but at the end of the day what you could never ever ever criticize harry roseman for resting uh, and sort of thinking he's good enough i think some teams could go oh aj brown Devontae smith fine but the eagles are really competing they had a need they had a clear need and they went out and they tried to do something a bit creative and i think there's a lot of teams out there who do not look to improve and do not they don't reflect on their roster as much as Howie Roseman does. I mean, some general managers would probably think, well, I've drafted two guys, so why would a coach complain about a wide receiver free? What more do you want? But I think give Howie credit. I think when he realizes maybe that there is a weakness, he will try to do something. So I will end by saying, yeah, I'm very thankful for the Eagles at least try these things because not every team out there does it. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this breaking news version of the podcast. We will try to come to you guys with uh, short podcasts like this throughout the season. It won't always be Johnny and I. It might just be me. It might be some of the other guys on the network. But if you guys like these breaking news podcasts, let us know. We'll try to get these out when big things happen. Um, thank you guys for hopping in with us on a Thursday afternoon. We really appreciate you guys. Five-star ratings, reviews, always appreciated. Uh, follow us on Twitter. He's at Johnny Page. I'm at Shane Half NFL, and we'll catch you guys next time.